What's up, guys? It's me, Cthulhu Crisis. What's up, guys? Oh. It's me, Cthulhu Crisis. I made one What's mistake up? here. All right. I'm here with Akuhish, or Akuhish here, and we are going to be having a pretty fun race tonight, I think. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So we are getting everything set up, or everything is set up for that now. And we're going to go ahead and flip over where we can see our runners. And today we have a great race between Mershana and One Free Fits, uh, also known as Cold Drizzle. And they are going to be racing Epoch Fail uh, with duplicate characters. So I think this will be pretty fun. We're doing this. Uh, part of the reason we're doing this today is... Um, we have a marathon run coming up between these two racers, and so I thought it'd be good to just do a practice run here, and uh, we'll get everything up and going, uh, get some practice in, and uh, get some hype going before this Friday. So I, I think this will be a lot of fun, and uh, we can go ahead and tell our runners to, uh, we can go ahead and start the countdown on that, and we will right, get I'll this race going. I'll send them off. It's going to be go. it's going to be interesting to see uh what characters we have as options. Now last race we did the uh, Jets of Time key item was found very early in the run. I think at Cathedral or not Cathedral at Snail Stop or Carpenter. So it'll be very interesting to see that uh and we're starting with, is that uh, Magus Frog and Robo? Uh, yes. Okay. Appreciate that. I'm still getting used to figuring out the hues on these. And then um, let me fix one thing here. So... What are you looking for at the beginning of these runs, in your opinion, Aku? In the beginning, I'm looking at how to gain a couple of levels and the two first two techs. And that would be for Robo. Okay. And what um, what differences in the opening game here do you think are most important for somebody to know for a category like this? Oh, you are limited to where you can go. You cannot just fly around with the epic. So we have to travel on foot. That causes some issues where if you want to go to cathedral, you have to go through the mountain. Like you can just go straight up through the portal go to the mountain there and go to cathedral or you can go to the epic that's in the southern continent and go south of Zenon Bridge. And there's other than that there is one check you can look at otherwise it's Ooh. finding characters. snail stop pendant Ooh. That's interesting. Now, is Pendant less valuable without Jets of Time because of the amount of areas you'll have to walk through? Or it, it can be more valuable because the Jets of Time can be on Mount Woe. Oh, that's a good point. Or in the future in Aristome even. So, like, the pendant can be something amazing to find. Yeah, and the, I mean, always the great loot available there. And we see Marshana taking the Bellbird fight, which is one of my favorite. That Dinodoro grind is, is definitely one of my favorites if you're able to do it, like, safely. And I kind of force it. If I don't have Magus or Ayla. 
Like I, I will buy a weapon for someone and go to that fight. Yeah, I'll try to for sure. I, I prefer to have the ability to do it for sure. So we see one free fits heading into desert. Not finding a lot of great gear. Oh, that making my hand will be good for Robo. Think that gives enough power for that first fight on Denodoro. You want an attack power of about 50 for that fight. And we got Mershana going to the northern continent of 680. Fitz is going to see who is at the burrow. This is a good thing to see because it can offer you some insight as to what you can and cannot do. Yeah, this is actually one of the few uh, one of the few peekable checks in jets. And that is some sort of robo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new to double new. <laughs> one coming in and one coming out. Again, I do not know the palette swaps for anyone in this at all. Yeah, the palette swaps seem like one of the trickier aspects of this category. As there says he wiki... thinks it's Chrono. Okay. And in the wiki, we do have all of the palette swaps and what they are. I'm just never going to look at it and memorize it. Well, I was, uh, I'm, I'm uh, colorblind, so it makes it a little tricky <laughs> on some of the oh. some of the palettes. <laughs> so I'm not going to be disadvantaged by not memorizing it when I race against you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rithrix, for putting that page in chat. <laughs> Uh, just to repeat, so this race is a, uh, a practice race for Game Over Cancer. This Friday evening, we have a race on Game Over Cancer um, over at Streiser 86s channel. Um, it's a great event we've been a part of for the last couple years as the Jets community. Um, and this race is Epoch Fail with duplicate characters. Everything else is pretty much standard race, except no boss rando. That is a Luca Chrono. So I'm, I'm gonna say that is Chrono in Burrow, or I pretty much agree with that it is Chrono with the red. There's a red hue. Yeah, it looked that way. I I think I agree with you. And Mershana making sure she got the Xenon Bridge check checked off. Because after you finish Cathedral, you end up at the castle. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't want to have to go back later. Yeah, even though you can get this free shelter every time you get on the screen, and if you don't get get that trigger going, you can get two more shelters by coming out and coming back in. Wait, which place is that? In the forest? Yes, in the forest. There's two bushes that wiggle, and it's the upper right one. 
that a monster jumps out of and drops to shelter. Oh, okay. The other one comes up as a enemy encounter. So in this particular one, I would be trying to get that pendant as soon as I can, and then a few levels and power to get into the future. And if Fitz is going to get his Luca, Mershana completing Cathedral. And Mershana does have a the screen clear, so all of these fights are going to be really fast. So chat telling us uh, the tell of who each character is with the palettes uh, is mostly like the hair color is going to help you figure that out is what chat's saying. And they said with Robo, it's his eye color where other characters hair would be. So that is something you can watch for. Did fit softlock, and he had to reset. Because he did this battle, and then I saw the reset. Yeah, I was uh, fixing something, so I didn't catch that. That is unfortunate, if so, because he is going to be a cathedral behind at the beginning here. And no random bosses, so we know who's going to be everywhere. It's interesting that you don't get that free carpenter check in it this in this because category because that I mean that's one less tool at your disposal. Yeah, it is. If you're really bold, you can go through Hecran's cave in the beginning and use that vortex point, but there's no way to get back without going through Hecran's cave. Uh, so if Hecran's Cave, if you don't have the tools to get through Hecran's Cave, it can be very challenging, I would assume. <laughs> challenging to impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting Hecran with Slash <laughs> on Chrono. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it does not get you to Carpenter. It's, I'm saying... It's a different kind of a check. Oh, I see. But you can 
go to Hecarim's cave, get that speed tab and magic tab, but you need the magic to go through Hecarim's cave, and then get that tab and item. Fitz grabbing that bromide as Mershana finishes off Cathedral. We'll probably grab the character and then head to Bridge, would be my guess, with how they set everything up. Yeah, and that's how I would go about it. And I would go through the bridge no matter what the key item is, because that just opens up that pathway. And you can just use the epic to travel instead of going through that mountain. Oh, I see what you're saying. You can avoid Mystic Mountain and just use the... Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. It's it's interesting because certain, certain checks or certain areas that uh, weren't as important to do early but were options have a lot more power like like you said like the zenith bridge opens up that continent in a way that saves you quite a bit of time and then uh, obviously with like pendant we're gonna have the opportunity to go to the future and it, we actually have a fair amount of space for some route divergence here i mean fitz picked up the pendant marshana did not have the funds to pick up the pendant I think Mershana, like, because she learned a lot from me, I spend money in the beginning a lot more in these mm -hmm. seats and don't look at that item until later. No, I agree. I, but, I, I like, I like, especially in this category, since you start on the transporter screen, uh, when you leave, you can just, like, grab a weapon and know that you can do Dinodoro start. Especially, like, it just makes a lot of sense in this category, I think. Yeah, the only time it might hurt a little bit is if it's gate key, because you can go right to the past, get that level 15 character, and unlock magic. But even then, it's not that big of a time waste. And the item here is the gate key. So I'm sure both of them are going to want to keep that. Oh, I would think so. Zombor is not really a hard boss. That wooden sword on Chrono might not be doing much, though. And suddenly, we have a change in the pace. <laughs> As Fitz skips the back end of Cathedral, and we're at the same, pretty much the same spot. Yeah, we are. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, now obviously we have the the hindsight of being able to look and and know if if that's gonna mess anybody over. Like, does the character at Guardia, Ayla, does she lock anything? No. <laughs> so we have the benefit of that knowledge, um, but Fitz may not know that, or Fitz doesn't know that that that's who's there. Yeah, Fitz might be thinking it's Marl, and Marl could be locking something. Yeah, the nice thing is, because you've got Robo already, unless it's Marl, you don't need it. You don't need it for progression, at least. Right. But it could be any of the seven characters to help your team. Like, it could be a Luca to help you out if you want her on your team. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> 
And we have stereo zombors, the scariest thing maybe ever. <laughs> <laughs> take out the top as... Well, you don't want to take out the top too fast because then once the bottom gets so far to the right, it that's when the bottom starts attacking. Yeah, but the bottom's nowhere near as scary as the top is with its doom laser. <laughs> yeah. That hurts so much. Yeah, like you want to take out the top fast, but you don't want to take it out instantly if you can't take out the bottom just as fast. And that fire breath attack is weak. If it's damaging both with that cyclone, so the bottom will be having a lot less health when he targets that part of it. Yeah, the techs. We haven't talked about the techs they have very much. Uh, not great. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Uh, right now, no, they're not great. Subpar techs. I mean, Magus is always going to have subpar techs, and by that I mean like no techs at the start of the run uh, for about one more dungeon like in the middle of the next dungeon he might start learning stuff, but it, it really does take a while um, and Robo, I mean Robo's got good techs but if you don't pull them, he's got a lot of terrible techs too, laser spin is like borderline unusable <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it even though it does do shadow type damage, it is a weak shadow. And Fitz got through that fight. Checking that shop. They're probably still looking for some of their basic consumables. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, ethers and mid tonics. Those are the two I'm really looking for, and shelters. Yeah, I'm bad about wasting shelters. So I buy a lot of them. Yeah, they are third on my list to buy. And I tend to buy them later, when I can f afford to get ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I usually, in standard flags, I probably grab four or five at the start, usually. Um, a couple revives, some mid tonics, and some ethers. But if I'm doing a different category or I'm doing Lost Worlds or something like that, I'm much more likely to buy every one I'm going to need for the run. So I'm just going to buy like 11. <laughs> and then I'll have enough for like, I'll use the last one before Zeal or something. <laughs> I'm usually pretty close on it. And Fitz found that vortex point. It's about in between those trees on the upper part of that island. And going through that vortex point, you do not see those two... I forget the name of them. Those two little grunts in the beginning. Yeah. The... Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That other mini grind spot. If you, if you really have bad characters, you can do that and then mark it. But <laughs> if you don't have to, like, if you get triple, like, double moral start. <laughs> yeah, I'd still rather buy a bow for her because a bow that you can buy from Melchior is good enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's the nice thing about the Melchior shop is it's always going to be good enough. <laughs> Which I think has always been the idea behind it, is like, just in case RNG completely leaves you on your own. <laughs> here's here's one place with one weapon for everyone but Magus, because Magus starts with a good enough weapon. Yeah. And Mershana did pick up her pendant. Oh... Heading over to use that gate key, I assume, in the same manner. Yes, I would be running over there, too. <laughs> I, 
I wonder if there's any level difference from skipping the back of Cathedral. Or if it's mostly made up for now. Just, like, I wonder how much of an impact that's going to make going forward. If any. It would be one, maybe two. I think just one level, maybe two levels. But it yeah. will even out. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if one player got tech doubling because of it, and one player didn't. If it affected tech doubling, like, um, Fitz would have gotten tech doubling on bridge, whereas, or maybe, I would think on bridge, Fitz would have gotten tech doubling. It, it is on bridge, the first bridge fight. Yeah, and then if you do cathedral... Um, you can set yourself up to get tuck doubling on Yakra. Yeah, so as far as text go, they're going to be at about the same spot. Yeah. And I think I would have unlocked magic for Chrono. Or Fitz's side. Mershana doesn't need to unlock magic at all with that team. But going to the end of time does open up 65,000 or antiquity. So she's got that opened up. And she's gonna either want to go through Hecran's cave or go back and go to the other, to the fair, to Epic or to Mystic Mountains. And it's looking like she's going to go through Hecran's cave. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust this little bit here, make it look a little better. Fitz did not get that skip, but with three characters, it's it's not that big of a deal. No, no, not like in Lost Worlds when <laughs> some luck can really take those away from you. It's real uh, unfortunate. In Lost Worlds, you also are. Oh, I guess you could. 15. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I know those those matches where you start off and you get like gate key at the the snail stop and and it's not epoch fail and you just go straight like that can be pretty pretty risky sometimes that's what i do i'll go straight <laughs> there get my level 15 character with three techs and go from there and it is a magus Maro Magus, I think? No, Chrono Magus. Yeah, red hair. And the the color of Chrono's clothes. So that robo in Burrow should be Maro, then. Well, it could... St or no, no, they're all... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because, yeah, Magus would be more blue. Yeah. Interesting. Krogus. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like Krogus. <laughs> now, interestingly, 
Mershana's going through Hecran Cave. Well, it, it is a key item check. Yeah. But is, like, is it worth skipping the character that may make it easier? I guess if you're confident that the techs you have are going to get you through the fight, I guess it's it's definitely a play you can make. We'll have to you see how not... that pays off. Yeah, because this is a flag set not really used much, not everyone knows all of the routes that you can do. That's true. This is a very new category, too. This has not seen a lot of competitive play. There's not really much established meta at this point, which is really interesting. Um, but you're right, that is an option that, that could be playing a factor here. And every time you go through this cabinet, unless, unless if you go to end of time, it just pops you out in prehistory. Fitz heading straight for end of time. Yeah, so now antiquity is open for Fitz. Looking for the right pi uh, light pillar. Uh, yup. <laughs> <laughs> always a guessing game. It's always the last one you check. Yeah, and I do not remember all of the light pillars and where they go. I just know the main ones I use. Yeah, I know where prehistory is. <laughs> <laughs> I know where Medina Village is. <laughs> so we're going to get a key item check on uh, Mershana's side. A bent sword. Could be helpful. It could be. We do have the frog character. Could be helpful, but I'll tell you this. Mershana is hoping it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm one of the few that doesn't mind going through Megas' castle. <laughs> I quite like it. That's why I made a whole category about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's interesting, like, anytime I look at the dungeons... And I look for the dungeons that have the biggest disparity between, like, a new player and a player that knows that dungeon, like, perfectly. And uh, Mount Woe is one of those ones that you could lose a bunch of time on if you're not familiar. And um, that one is, too, for me. Yeah, and... With Makis' castle, it's those extra bosses in there. Yeah, it's like, I think it's like about 20 minutes at normal LOC levels. Um, if, you re if you know what you're doing and the fights go pretty decent, you can do it in about 20. But you can get closer to 30 if things are sub suboptimal. Yeah, and then Magus himself is not a pushover boss. No, he is... Because he, I, I always thought at that section, it's trying to trick you into thinking you're going into the final fight. You know what I mean? Like, they've set up this big enemy that's on the opposite side of your guys. You have to fight all these people to get to the end of his castle. Like, a lot of games would have ended there. <laughs> I think that is what they were trying to emulate but nope you're only about a third of, of the way through the game yeah for me the part i never want i never like if i'm uh pushing someone to play the game and or i'm helping them along through it or hanging out with them while they play it um if they're playing vanilla chrono trigger i'm always hoping that they go into the ocean palace lavos fight 
thinking that's the end of the game. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the best feeling? I, I My only thing is I wish he didn't do over a thousand damage to you. <laughs> I wish it made it I... look like it was doable. <laughs> uh, I like that it's over a thousand. You Cause like? Because it just shows how strong. Yeah. That's a good it's point. It's like, here, here's an unwinnable fight. Just come at me. Because you're not supposed to win it anyway. So if it does less damage, like where you can live through it, you're going to grind a little bit more. You're going to actually beat the game at that point. Maybe. Maybe. It'd be interesting. Um, but I, yeah, that was always one thing. And then I always wished they made you do all the side quests before they give you Chrono back. I think you should have to do all the other side quests and then Melchior's like, oh, you could try this. <laughs> but, but I get it. <laughs> and some Stereo theory. Zombors again. Or an, another <laughs> Retinite. It's another Stereo boss fight. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, bits. Took out the middle bit. Oh, them legs is gonna be mad. Oh, Frogus. Oof. Laser spin area bomb robo. <laughs> Oh, Uzi Punch is going to help Mershana out. Yeah, there goes the the uh, top of Retinite. And both of her robots have Uzi Punch. I'm going to link to chat where our marathon race is going to be. Um, in case anybody wants to leave... A follow before the event. If it's might just survive this. Mershana is done with her fight. And we're if hoping it... for the double. Yeah, she she doubles up the experience and tech points. Oh, that's great. It is. Speed tab drop, too. That's gonna help Robo out. Oh, Frog is taking the big hit again. Going down on Fitz's side. Yeah, Fitz it's gonna, it's gonna be time. tough. It's gonna be tough, but it's savable. It's just rough. Yeah, right now I'd be just dealing damage to it. Mm -hmm. I'd be uh, arguing with myself if maybe I should have restarted when this first started going bad. And then <laughs> another part of me would be like, well, now we can't do that. It's been another minute of us trying to heal loop. <laughs> right. You know, it's always a, a struggle trying to decide, like, do I, do I just keep going? Or is it faster if I start over and I do things right at the beginning or I have a little bit better luck? Once those legs start going, like, this is going to be rough to get out of. And I don't know if that was a difference in strategies or just a slight difference in uh, tech points from uh, Cathedral and now Hecarim Cave. Because Fritz didn't go through... Hecron. I don't know. It with Fitz, the top might have gone down, and then had a tech lined it up could to be. go, and it just targeted the middle. It could be. It it's it's an easy fight to have slip out of your control a little bit. They're trying. It, it is. There's the restart. Yeah, it, it was getting to that point of. You cannot continue with that fight. Yeah. But do you co come back in or not? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's a good question. Will they go to another check and do that first? And they're checking how many tech points they need for Uzi Punch. They know if I had Uzi Punch, I can get through that. So they're probably going to push just deep enough into Dinodoro to get that. Or, I mean, if you're going deep enough to get that at 25 tech points, are you just doing Dinodoro at that point? Like, do you just clear it out? The other piece of that sword. Oh no! <laughs> so technically, in go mode. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if Fitz is going to clear Denodoro. Uh, when you come up here and take that fight, you're just gonna go up and finish. The I mountain. would think. I would think so. There's nothing else up here other than that key item check. Well, I wasn't sure if they were just coming up to get the 25, just trying to get the 25 tech points. Couldn't think of a way, a faster way to get it nearby. But, but yeah, I yeah, think by is... time you get 25 tech points here, you're pretty much to the boss. <laughs> Yeah, you might as well just go to the boss and try to tech double on the boss fight. Yeah, that'd be really nice. And Mershana has a choice. Keep going elsewhere to find more stuff or go to Magus' castle. Can you imagine Mershana goes to Magus' castle? Because it does look like she's stocking up right now on gear and, and equipment and things. Can you imagine Mershana goes to Magus' castle and Fitz finds the Dreamstone here? On Dinodoro. Well, Fitz would also need that ruby knife. Oh, that's true. That's true. Let's see. They've also got access to uh, Reptite Lair. They've got access to the future. So they yes. can at least do Aerostome. And Megas' castle, you do not need Jets of Time to finish. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, does that help balance out the time it takes to do Magus's castle a little bit? It might. That's interesting to me. Like, the idea that, like, if you don't have the jets of time, Magus's castle might be your fastest route, depending where it's hiding. And also, the Dreamstone going through the Reptite layer, you don't need the just of time for that either. Yeah, I guess once you don't. You yeah, once you climb that mountain, get the character up there, you get the dactyls. Oh! Yeah, you're right. Interesting. I didn't so think about that. So the only go mode you need the Jets of Time for is Zeal Ending. And it's only to get into the Blackbird. Or not the Blackbird. <laughs> not the Blackbird. <laughs> we aren't going there. <laughs> We're not getting on the Blackbird. <laughs> the Omen, yeah. The Omen. <laughs> that should. That's going to be the new flag. There's going to be a flag that changes one entrance in the game to take you into the blackbird it could be any door <laughs> just one door is changed you just get jumped and put into that cell and you have to fight your way out yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> and then you go oh man why did i go pet pet chrono's cat <laughs> <laughs> that'd be pretty good i hope everybody's having a great saturday night i know i am And I'm very excited for for this weekend. Sunday, you mean, right? 
Yeah, what did I say? <laughs> yes, did I say Saturday? Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, that shows you guys. I helped a friend move all day yesterday. So, <laughs> as one free fits, uh, <laughs> attacks Massa and Mune, and I noticed uh, m the Massa Mune fight, like the Mas Massa and Mune fight, the first one, was only four tech points. <laughs> Yeah, it's not much at that's all. That's pr that's pretty low. <laughs> really, the, I'm feeling for Fitz because these t starting techs, like the Magus techs, are pretty great. But this Robo the, that he's using, the techs are just terrible. <laughs> and they're starting to get better with Uzi Punch coming up. But like right now, there's not much for Robo to be doing here. And the dual tech for Robo is Super Bolt. And you need shock on both Robos. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's Robo using shock on Mershana's side. <laughs> oh, that's, no, that's Magus. From oh, he's <laughs> using shock. <laughs> to, op to open up the pathway. <laughs> This is the most convoluted garage door opener I've ever seen somebody have to their castle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think there's a secret password for the monsters to go in, but because Frog doesn't know <laughs> it, he just cleaves the... Uh, <laughs> I, I want the video game of, you know, the knight inside the magic cave right there? That's like, he has the note talking about jugglers. I want to hear his story. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get in there? Well, like I said, I'm, I hope everybody's having a good Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's going on on Fitz's side? Let's see what this key item is. As Mershana has already started Magus's castle. This is... I'm pretty excited about the rest of this race. Because if Fitz finds a different go mode... There's a lot of ways this could go still. Ooh, C-Trigger. A little unfortunate. But do you gamble on Eris? It's just so long to get to the future. Like, I guess if you don't know Desert Holds Progression... But I feel like you probably check desert, even though you had trouble. Still seven tech points away on Uzi Punch. Should have maybe taken a couple extra fights on the way up the mountain. Mershana clearing out the goons so that she can fight the uh, bosses in Magus's castle. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I don't really check that stuff out too much. I'm more going after the bosses. Yeah. Yeah, but there's probably enough. Because I've used these as grinds before. If you start with an early, like, water 2. That will get Uzi Punch, and that is all that was holding them back. Now, here's the problem. If Fitz finishes Desert, gets the other half of the... S or no, Fitz doesn't have the first half of the sword. No, because it's not. it's Hecarim Cave. 
Um. Oh, man. If Fitz finds that same go mode, they're in trouble. I wonder if Fitz Kent is going to the future. I I think that's the gamble because if it's if it's clone you still don't have go mode, but you're you're slightly closer, I guess. <laughs> because you because you need the just of time for that one. Yeah, that's uh that's really something. I don't know how Fitz gets out of this. We're going to have to see Fitz will pull something out. We'll have to see what happens here. And we got Slash happening on Mershana's side. Who takes less damage from magic, but like when you use the ultimate magic attack, it, it still does a lot. <laughs> here we see Ret Knight back again and angrier than last time. Hopefully that's not true. <laughs> he was pretty angry last time. Well, Uzi Punch took out the top. And there's two <laughs> Maguses looking at it. No, no. <laughs> Waiting for one of them to pull out like a squirt bottle. <laughs> psh, psh, psh. <laughs> And Slash is angry, so, like, one more Uzi punch should take it out. I think he gets to that angry point at about 500 hit points left. There goes Slash. And Fitz did not get the double tech and experience points, but still got through the fight. Yeah, and that was what was important in that moment. It's, it's really interesting because even if, even if uh, Fitz goes to the future, they gain access to one check right now, is that correct? Just, yes, just, just air stone. Check. Yeah, because they, because we have access to everything else that would be then, provided access to. Then I think if I'm uninterested in going through Hecarim Cave for some reason, or if if I just don't, if I don't go to Hecarim Cave, I'm probably going to Reptite Lair because it's open, but we don't have. I think we have Lightning 2 on Magna, on Magus, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But if I have Lightning 2 on Magus, I'm probably going Reptite pretty early here. Yeah, I think that chest with the oozes by it is a slightly lower tier. There's the than... Bent Hilt for Fitz. But got a green dream out of Megas' castle. And that's going to help out a lot. Yes, it will. Not as much as anti-life Magus it would have, but <laughs> still quite a bit. Oh, Fitz is going to Mount Wool. Okay, now this is a gamble I can get behind for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why either, but... <laughs> and we don't have that buffed up geeky guy at the top. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> nice, isn't it? You think... <laughs> you know, I would think these Earthbound people would be a lot meaner to somebody like Magus, especially if there's two of them and a robot. <laughs> 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 there's a part that my friends and I always laugh at when we play Vanilla... Chrono Trigger, there's a part where Shala is talking to the Earthbound and is trying to get them to help um, with 
like all the lava stuff and the ocean palace and all that and uh she says we're just like you or we're uh we're just like you guys except we have it worse because we're slaves to lavos <laughs> and then you like look and you're like well these people are living in caves and like you're wearing silk <laughs> right like, I, I i don't quite understand <laughs> Oh, Murciana got flea down to 50% health. <laughs> so it's a chance of that counterattack happening. That counterattack is rough, too. Oh. Yeah, and, it, oh. and it's a 50% chance oh. that it happens. Wow. That hurts. We're going below 50, or almost below 50 health on everybody there. It's a 50% chance every time you hit them? Yes. Wow, it's that is rough. Three attacks in a row and getting that counter. <laughs> Lord Batsy agreeing with me. Uh, yeah, shut up, Shala. You have food and climate control. Yeah, you. They ha they have more than that, Lord Batsy. They have a whole, like facility up there like a whole village that they just sleep <laughs> and like dream and write stuff down <laughs> like <laughs> these people are like out looking for berries <laughs> you know i'm just saying <laughs> and then they have a they're in a shaded area because yeah. there's a prison right above them too <laughs> And Marshana getting through that tough fight. And Fitz nailing the first uh, couple woe skips there. Yeah, the background music privilege. <laughs> <laughs> she walks in the room and uh, people pick up their instruments and do, do. <laughs> Start playing her theme song. <laughs> Yeah, and Dalton also has music <laughs> changing rights. <too>. Yeah, <laughs> he does. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that Jess of Time is on top of Mount Wolf. Wouldn't that be something? Fitz would still be in trouble. What would it open yeah. that Fitz would jump on? Carpenter. Like, oh, that's true. That's okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Carpenter, uh, son of sun, which makes the future more appetizing because it's two checks now. Yeah. <laughs> but we also could just find Dreamstone here. Well, we would still need Ruby Knife. We still need Ruby Knife. I keep I forget Ruby Knife exists. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. <laughs> well, with Megas's castle, you don't need Ruby Knife. Yeah. It just opens up for you. It's gonna be Robo's ribbon, <laughs> or or uh, <laughs> I don't think there's anything it could be that would be completely useless but <laughs> jerky like ev oh jerky's taken out oh of the you're right time. you're right <laughs> yeah so there's actually no jerky oh in. prism shard would be good if prism shard was found <laughs> and it would be available technically <laughs> And by good, I of course to... mean trolly and bad. <laughs> yeah, I, you just have to force him a summon, eh? Yeah. With that robo character, then you can do prism shard. <laughs> <laughs> to see time. to see if you get something else. <laughs> Mershana making pretty quick time through uh, at Magus Castle, though. Yeah, she is making really good time. 
I think maybe she's played Legacy of Cyrus before. <laughs> Once or it's just practice. I know of. <laughs> it's it's not often she's played Legacy of Cyrus. Oh, there's a prediction. Will we find the Jets of Time on Mount Woe? Ooh. I'm putting in some points. And falling down here once on Mershana's side is not bad. Because you do get four decently high tier chests. Yeah, and a save point if you want it. Yes. And I think each drop down has its own pattern. So if you really knew the patterns of where the save point is, you can go to it every time. The amulet is good. I just shifted the vote pretty hard there <laughs> with about 4k points right at the end. <laughs> I'm putting it all on yes, and I have not seen the spoiler log. Yeah, I did not roll it with the spoiler log, and I have not asked someone to pull it either. So I am not a big fan of that inside corner route for Magus's castle, the the pit room there. Um, well, that's the route I go. Yeah. Time. I know that we've had some runners in the past that used that route too. For me, I've always found it easier to do the J, like make the J, um, just because that corner feels finicky. It feels like you bump off it sometimes and it pushes you into that pit. But I could be wrong. But I've just found the J to be more consistent for me personally. And the fastest strat is whatever is consistent for you. Yeah, exactly. If, if it's slower for someone else, but you can do it every time, it that's a faster strat. <laughs> I used to uh, practice. There's a one cycle for um, the bird at the end of Denodoro. You know what I'm talking about? That yeah. last ladder. Um, there's a one cycle that you can do on that, but it's like perfect movement. And if you're off at all, you get the encounter. <laughs> no, <laughs> and I, I do the, yeah, I do this two cycle thing. Do it's you do the two rocks go thing, like moon? Yeah, like, yeah, like I go and I grab that chest because it sets up the timing. Then I catch the rock, get the other chest, and run up. Yeah, well, so if, you, if you're if you already holding down and right when you enter that screen, and you just keep holding that, and then you let go of right as soon as you're lined up with the ladder, you can get down the ladder and do the falling animation before he throws the rock. And then you can run straight to the ladder. But like I said, if you're off at all, you, <laughs> you miss it. But for a long time, I was convinced, like, that's going to be the... That's going to be the one that I practice, and that's going to set me apart. And <laughs> then I realized, like, saving one or two seconds at a risk of 30 seconds is probably not worth it. Like, if you can get it consistent every single time. Yeah. But then you're saving those couple little seconds where I'm trying to figure out how to save minutes on boss fights. Exactly. Exactly. I think we're on the same page there. If somebody has a Discord link handy that they could pop on here, um, for anybody interested in the least at playing this, learning more about it, getting involved with discussions of strategy and things, we'd love to have you in the Discord. And... Um, we try to help out new players where we can. We watch a lot of each other's streams and um, we do races like this and we're in the middle or we're just at the beginning of our uh, organized play tournament uh, right now, our most recent one. And I'm sure there will be more soon. I want to set something up for Lost Worlds at some point. A little I mini like like one month tournament or something. 
I would like to set something up for Legacy of Cyrus myself. Oh, that would be fun too. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> Mershana just stomping through Magus's castle as Fitz finds the Grand Leon. It, and no frog to use it with either. <laughs> Unless if there's a frog in the future. This is unfortunate. That really is. That... Oh. Is all my points, all my channel points, <laughs> everything oh, I've way, saved. I, I rolled this seed. Yeah, I should have known. <laughs> I should have. I should have voted no. <laughs> oh, some person is rich. <laughs> oh, they won sixty-five hundred channel points. Nice. Two, two people. <laughs> Ritherix and some person no. <laughs> Sorry, I hope you can't hear that horn. My neighbor's car, the alarm goes off every time he starts it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, Fitz is going through Hecran's cave now. Oh, Fitz is going to be on the same path, but about one Magus castle behind. And the cranks are dropping dream guns. So, something that I think can be sold. Fitz is in a rough spot. Yeah, all it takes is going to that one dungeon, getting that one key item. You know, I'm not out here trying to jinx anybody. You know that. I'm not. I'm not commentating, cursing anybody. Um, but could this be a sub two for Mashana? It very well could it, be. If without wipes, I think it could be. All she has to do is get through Magus. It it'll be close. If she That's... if she gets through Magus and she has a decent ocean palace, and she's prepared for Lavos in the first go. That level twenty four going into Magus. That's that's really doable. I think so. And so, then the first golem fight's not that bad, then she can grind at the grind spot. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because I think all of Lavos, if you're geared for it, if you, for me anyway, if I think that all the phases of Lavos are going to take me 15 minutes, that's a pretty safe number. I'll usually end up under that. But it's a pretty, like, if I'm looking at where I am in the run, I add 15 minutes for Lavos. Just in case, you know. Um, and I think even with, like, 15 minutes for Lavos and half hour for Ocean Palace, I th it's doable if things go well. We'll have to see how bad Lavos is. Or not Lavos, Magus. Because Magus could still be a roadblock here. Yeah, and with... Oh, that's too many here. robos. <laughs> it's too many robos. <laughs> Everyone's getting upgraded. <laughs> well, Uzi Punch. Change it, then hope it changes to Shadow, then Dark Matter. Oh, they have Super Volt, too, for if it changes the light. Now, yes. can you explain that a little bit, Aku? How do they have Super Volt? Because doesn't that use Chrono? Well, we, because of duplicate characters, and with the duplicate character tech flag on, as long as the two similar characters have one of the techs, they get a super-powered tech. 
and for two robos it is super volt so both characters need shock and I think it's it would deal two or three times shock normal shock damage so it, it is a very powerful tech I think I always like I even think vanilla super vault is incredibly strong in certain situations I love in that tech jet, yeah and vanilla uses lightning 2 as a yeah attack. I think I pushed whereas, for that actually <laughs> whereas here in jets it's it uses luminaire damage yeah and it feels better it feels a lot better it, it really does it it hits hard. That's my that's my ultimate like if I get to choose a Lost World start, it's Chrono Robo with Super Volt after the first encounter. Because that'll two shot Guardian and it'll one shot the bits. <laughs> so I love it. I just like that is the, the my ultimate start if I get to choose. I think the bits have 500 hit points, four, four or 500. Yeah. So it doesn't take too much to take them out. Dark matter will take them out too. Yes. Lightning and shadow damages guardian. Mm-hmm. And water, water works too. It's actually interesting with water, like, that whole section of the game, um, they don't expect you to have water spells, and so none of the enemies have, like, all the enemies have kind of non-standard defense to water, as I understand it. So, it's not that they're weak to it, but they just don't have the stand, like, an average amount of defense to it. So I always hold, or heard for Guardian water was really good. And Dragon Tank as well. Dragon Tank, you're not expected to have water either. Fid's heading to the canyon. I think Fitz is going to have to bite the bullet and say, I don't know where Mershana is, but I've got go mode and I've got to start heading to Magus' castle. And Mershana finishing off this Magus fight. And Mershana is ready for the final dungeon. I'm really curious what's at Eris Dome. Like, the worst thing I could think of being there would be if um if prism shard was an heiress can you imagine <laughs> Alright, we've got a Magus Robo that Fitz got after repairing. Mershana is heading up to the Kingdom of Zeal. Probably going to grab the speed tab and check the new shop on the way. Um, it's worth... It's probably worth the time. Because the speed is... I, I always... I, I think... Uh, Speed is such an important stat because it's a safety stat. It's it's a stat that can make the difference between, like, 
having a really easy time with a boss like Lavos or having a really difficult time with a boss like Lavo. Or Lavos, not Lavo. Alright, sorry about that. I'm back. Oh no, you're okay. Yeah. So I see Mershana got through yes. her Magus fight. And Fitz got a, uh, a fro uh, robot Magus. Or the other way around, I guess. A Magus Robo. Oh. That Magus was in Burrow? Yeah. Okay. We were really off. Yeah, we were. <laughs> so I was talking about speed as a stat, and I said that speed is so important because it's a safety stat. It's it's a it's one of the few stats that can make a night and day difference between having a difficult time with a boss and having the easiest time with a boss. Would you agree well, with that? Yeah. That like speed is yes. because the amount of actions you're able to do before um, before your opponent does something again is just such a big deal. In this it game. is, and if you can either match it or be a little bit faster, it it can make or break a whole fight. Yeah, I'm a big fan of if I get a Magus, he's getting one speed tap. Because every fight that I think Magus is super useful for, he needs one more speed. <laughs> <laughs> or like he the does. turrets outside Black Omen, he needs one speed to outspeed those easily. Uh, like for me that's a huge deal <laughs> yeah and i did that a lot in lost worlds too like i'd have magus i'd pop one speed on him mm -hmm. and go through geno especially if i was doing um lost worlds plus because then i know i'm gonna face those turrets Oh, good. Just remember, he did have to go to the boss rooms first. That's such a nice quality of life change. It really is. It is. We should remove it from Legacy of Cyrus. <laughs> I'm... I don't mind that, because you have to go through this castle and... Yeah. <laughs> removing it with when you can go through the <laughs> yeah i agree it, it makes sense it was a really f a really easy way to remove a good amount of time from this dungeon because what what's that i've never timed it but it's gotta be 35 pushing on 45 seconds right it's over a minute is it over because a minute okay go, it's about a minute a little bit over because you gotta go through all of these screen transitions on both sides Come back and then you can do that fight. All right. Well, we are in this uh, golem fight. Marshana is fighting the golem fight while Fitz starts the flea fight and I'm gonna see I'm gonna be quiet for just a minute here All right. yeah and golem fight can be really tough all depending on how you deal with it you know it, it's surprising to me like it's it's funny when I go back and I think uh, I think of the bosses that gave me the most trouble when I was new and one of them was like twin golems was a really important part of the run back then and I, I don't know how to explain what's different but like twin golems used to be like this the spot of the game at the end where you'd like use the save point and stop and look at everything because like twin golems you had to go in with a strategy 
Yes, you do. You do. And I, I don't know if it's just that we've all gotten so good at the various strategies that um, it's easier than it was back then, but it, it always it feels like we have we as a community struggle less with a couple of these fights than we used to. Yeah, I think we dived into the combat scripts of the bosses and figured out how they all work. And found better ways of dealing with them all. Yeah, because I know of them. in our last tournament, I don't know that we used the fire water strat that much. As far as, like, keeping them on single targets. Like, that's just such a useful tool if you have access to it. But Yeah. And there goes the golem. And we have Marshana in heading into the ocean palace. As Fitz continues the fight against Flea. Yep, yeah, and right now it's just grinding up to that level that you are comfortable with and going on to the twin golem fight and mega or levels after that. I mean, pretty good gear. It'll be interesting to see how the tech lists work. Because, like, this is a lot of AoE damage. Well, actually, I actually kind of like this team. The yeah, I season. do, too. Yeah, like, Uzi frog, Punch for frog a single Robo, target. That gives you drop kick and Uzi Punch at the same time. It gives you drop kick heal beam. It gives you, um, it gives you Super Vault. No, no, it doesn't give you Super Vault. Yeah, I, I, I like Ro this team, I think. Yeah, Robo Robo, you have Super Vault for oh, okay. good AoE. You got Megas for good AoE with Dark Matter. And you also have good single target with Uzi Punch. Then on Lavos 3, you can put Magus in the third spot and use Dark Hole when the middle bit is gone. Oh, that's interesting. What does it do if the middle bit is up? Does it only hit right bit? It hits middle and right bit. So but if you do... if you break the defense on right bit, you could use that till the end, like until its defense goes up, even if middle comes back. That's that's neat. Well, if middle is up, you can do AOE and it and you. Oh, will that's not true. Get the, that's true. The counter. And that would be Megas' strongest attack that would hit only right there without hitting both right and left. And Mershana has made it to the glorious grind spot in Ocean Palace. Where they will grind to a comfortable level, which varies player to player. Uh, and then they sometimes, will head to the lift. Sometimes it is gear dependent, too, with the players. That's true. I It's interesting. I think um, one of the things with like the highest level players, like you and, and Procky and Moon Blizzard or Zerkale. I, I don't want to na leave names off, but you guys know who you are. <laughs> um... Like, the, the, the top, top runners, it seems like the biggest difference is the number of things that they take into account for their decisions. Like, I think you are thinking about more variables than I am when you're in a boss fight. Yes, I am. I'm thinking how much damage can I do, how quickly I can do that damage, and how am I dealing that damage. Yeah, whereas I'm thinking, like, what's the most reliable 
thing I have that I can use against this boss. And then I'm... For most bosses, I don't count much anymore. HP. I really only count for Lavos 3 anymore. Um, I should get out of that habit. I'm sure that's a terrible habit. <laughs> I don't count. But I know... Um, I know a lot of other players that like keep a really thorough count in their head for boss HP. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that's a big difference between like an average player and a really high tier player is how many different variables are you taking into account when you're choosing your strategies and your checks and like what you're doing. Yeah, and with duplicate characters, yeah. it really changes a lot of strategies. Like, do you go with the two-person group, like where it's the same two people? Or do you try and find three different people? Yeah, and we have, um, we have the same team rolling on both of these, don't we? Or, or do we have different robos? I think we have different robos. We might have different robos, but it's pretty much <laughs> the same thing on yeah. both sides. Ooh, one free fits heading into what I call the Donkey Kong room. The Donkey Kong yeah. room one. <laughs> or yeah, Deacon. because there's two of them. <laughs> yeah. Also going inside strats, but nailing it. Yeah, there really wasn't anything in the drop-down. I don't think I've been in that drop-down room in quite a while. Or quite a few yeah. runs. <laughs> yeah, neither have I. Like, it is it is decent high gear down it there. It is. But... but it also, like... And this, this is going to come up... This is going to sound dumb. It feels so good to just go through that room without triggering anything. Like, when you <laughs> nail it... It's it's really satisfying. <laughs> yeah. And here's Donkey Kong Two. I'm gonna have to watch the Mershana side here and see if they menu, and we've got level 30. Now, everybody has a preference on what level they grind to. I tend to grind higher because I would much rather lose time grinding than lose time to a wipe. That's just me. Um, I know a lot of players are really comfortable. If they have good gear, they're really comfortable at like level 28. Level 28 is yes. pretty low for me. <laughs> yeah, like, I leave that grind spot at about 28 and take every fight on the way down, and by the time I get two Lavos, I'm at 30. Yeah. And I usually... Yeah. I like to grind at least to 32. And if I feel like and I'm I, ahead, I might grind to 34. And I do take the other fights into account. That's why I go to 28. Yeah. Also, depending on what gear is dropping too, because it can drop mega elixirs, elixirs. Oh yeah, tabs. that's the best when they drop megas, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna stay here a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get at least six of them. Yeah. Although, frankly, if I have that many Megas, I may not need the levels as bad. <laughs> I, I still want the levels and have them as backup. Like, oh, I'm low on MP. Mega. <laughs> if I've got... Let's say I've had a really lucky seed and I've gotten 10 Mega Elixirs. I'll probably leave the grind spot at 30. <laughs> 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 and then there's me thinking, yeah, I'm going to leave the grind spot at 27. <laughs> no, there's you thinking, well, I'm 
the teleporter scene is over, I better head on into Lavos. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how Mershana is going to deal with the elevator. Because we don't got any of those cheap tricks that we can do with Frog and Ayla. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a little bit trickier, but those Uzi punches should do it. They will. Black Hole would do it, too. I don't know if she has it yet or not. Fitz is doing the final Aussie fight, and then we'll be saving and heading to Magus, so not too much longer uh, for Fitz either, but I think Mershana has a pretty healthy lead here. It, she does. It would really take, it would really take some, some mistakes, or like a power outage. But no, um, like this this was interesting because it was such a linear seed, and then that boss gave Fitz trouble um, yeah. because that core went down, and it, it's it's really unfortunate because I think if Fitz had just gone back into the fight, they probably could have gotten through it. But maybe you know you if you don't know progressions behind it. Then yeah, Denodoro's the easier play, and you know you're gonna come out with Uzi Punch. You know, it's just, it was just unfortunate. It was skipping Cathedral and then uh, skipping Hectron Cave added up to make a tech point deficit that was enough of a problem for that boss, you know. Shauna making pretty decent time on the lift for somebody that doesn't have access to all the tools they would want. Mershana just <clears throat> going through the scouter fight. Yes, Black Hole has been reworked to deal non-elemental damage. So, instead of being a one-hit kill with a chance of <laughs> being effective, it just deals... Not well, mental damage with... and uh, and also a chance to soft lock the game. <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah, fair. we took that out. <laughs> it, it also has the doom sickle effect on it. So if the robos are down in this case, it will do increasingly more damage. heading to this other switch and just taking the scouter fights might still be feeling maybe, maybe they're feeling like they're ahead maybe they're feeling oh no they're gonna run from the fight so maybe they haven't maybe they don't know that skip yet 
it's it's a tough one until you get it down. And then once you get it down, you'll almost never miss it. Super Vault doing about 1100 and some change for Fitz. Yeah, As that... Marshana heads up to the save point before double golems and grabs a swallow. <laughs> for that chrono that <laughs> does not exist. Yes. <laughs> How very lost worlds of the seed. <laughs> Mershana begins the double golem fight. And Fitz continues his battle with good protection for Robo Magus. This should be about the end of of Robo here for Fitz. There it is. Yeah, no. Um, Roshana said I might be trying to do a Super Volt and either Fire 2 or Ice 2 with Magus. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so they're doing a play on the Fire Water Strat. Now, what makes this work is, uh, first off, their water attacks aren't very strong, and they may have elemental protection. Doesn't look like they do on that robo. But um, with water and fire on the double golems and the single golem they'll use a single target spell on your on one of your teammates and then they'll do an aoe the next time now if you keep flip-flopping it it'll keep going back to the single spell and they're using a uh, uh, super volt because it's giving them better damage from uh, there are two robos and so they're getting off that big lightning attack but you don't want the lightning counter attack and you don't want the shadow counter attack because they're really the shadow one they do it constantly and they're su like it's super slow animation and same with lightning 2 lightning 2 is not the fastest animation for you to sit and wait for both of them to hit you with for me, it's I'd rather deal with them targeting one person instead of the whole party. Yeah, that's the other side of it, for sure. But that's a really smart way to get off that extra damage without taking that extra risk. I like that. And she's using heal with one of the robots, so one can still hit both. And Magus is there to say, no, you, oh. you have to use this weaker elemental thing. Doomfinger... <laughs> at the new shop. <laughs> no Cthulhu Crisis arm, though. Inane Pyro, I will let you know real quick. I don't think anybody's done that, but I have seen a couple different players play two seeds, one controller, at the same time. So, you're not that far off. I'd love to see the, it with four. The closest I've done to that was Link to the Past and this at the same time with a shuffle. Oh, yeah. No, Moon and Procky both did a run where they uh, they had two instances up of two different seeds, and they played them in their entirety. Without, like, switching back and forth. It was, when they pushed up, it pushed up on both. <laughs> it's pretty wild. <laughs>
Okay, got through the twin golem fight on Marshana's side. With everyone up. As Fitz is entering the first of the golem fight. He made pretty good time on Magus's castle. Really. Yeah, he did. Now Mershana just has to go through the Lavos gauntlet. Yeah. Now, I, I want to say it again. Now, again, I am not trying to commentators curse anybody. But I also think it's important that we all get to enjoy the hype of this. Mershana has not had a sub-two-hour seed. And if things go well, that is a possibility. So I'm hoping that that happens, because I think that'd be a great finish to the race. Dead. I'm sure she's sweating and really nervous. Oh, I know that timer. I know, and that's why I, I feel a little bad saying something, but I also want chat to know, so that if she pulls this off when she comes in for the interview, you guys can all let her know because she should be impressed with this. This was a great run. She begins the Lavos Shell fight. A fight that is pr is easy to underestimate. <laughs> yeah, especially it's... when this is the stronger version of Lavos Shell, too. I think it's the stronger version of it that we use. Yeah, I just know it, it always feels like this boss is, a give, is like a giveaway. It's super easy. Um, but then every once in a while, whenever you go into the fight thinking it's going to be easy, boom, chaos. Like this Magus <laughs> right here. And then it becomes a little bit trickier. And then, like, you just aren't doing enough damage to him. <laughs> you know, so it, it's easy to... Uh, it's easy to underestimate this boss. Just like, uh, there's a couple others that, if like, uh, Lavo spawn on, uh, Death's Peak. It's not that hard of a boss, but the one time you go in and you're like, this is gonna be super easy, that'll be the time that he wipes your party. <laughs> Strong performances. I, I don't think this was really... I don't know. It, it's an interesting seed be because it's so linear. Like, if... Now, this is a big if. But if Prism Shard is behind um, Aerostone, this is like... All three go modes would be behind would be behind um, the sword, which would be super frustrating. <laughs> well, no one went to the future with that pendant. That's true. Yeah, so we don't know what was at Eris. <laughs> if Angarel is still around, I would love to know what was at Eris, though, on the scene. Smirk with yeah. the raid. Smirk was just finishing off uh, the last two... Um, qualifiers so we won't talk about how his run went but we will congratulate him on finishing hopefully i'm sure he finished somehow at least great 
But we've got a, a good race going here. Mershana finishing the shell and heading inside to get that tasty save point. Probably do some last minute adjustments and then heading in. Hoping Lavos 2 and 3 go perfect. Gear is pretty good overall. Pretty decent gear. Yeah, it, it is looking like it's good gear going. You would hope you had a better weapon for Magus, but like you're probably not going to auto attack with him that much the rest of this. Yeah, yeah. So. Magus doesn't really need a weapon. It's more magic for him. Yeah. This was Magus Go Mode, and uh, both of them went Magus Go Mode, but Fitz did a couple other checks. Went and gambled on Woe, which I don't think was a bad play. It was just unfortunate. If they had, if they had pulled, like, a, a clone up there, or a number of different things they could have pulled that would have maybe given them a different go mode to follow or a different path to follow. But a pretty linear beginning on the scene. And so this is Epoch Fail. So, yeah, this is Epoch Fail without finding Wings of Time. So yeah. it's pretty nice. <laughs> it's a nice thing to have happen yeah. for the race because... It's an aspect of this run you might not think about. There goes that first arm. We are not out of the woods yet. Because here comes the second arm. Oh, healing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the script is heal as the first thing to do when the other arm goes away. Nice. Good targeting. Pretty favorable. As Fitz heads into the all scouter fight. Again with no frog, no Ayla. So relying on that Uzi punch. Uzi and punch. Dark hole thing. Yeah. Lapis not quite going off in time for Mershana to save that robo. But still under control. Good use of heal beam here. Yeah, Mershana's been abusing that properly. Yeah, no really well handled you know she's playing safe but when you're at an hour and 47 minutes in Lavos 2 you don't want to wipe you want to you want to finish strong and you want to uh, have a good go of it you know? I'm gonna do whatever's gonna keep your characters alive <laughs> yes you do because it takes a lot longer to take a death and get back than it does to be safe and go yeah. through it. Slavos 2 is going pretty, pretty well. A little low on health, but the heal beam is already coming out, getting them to a safer number. And this will top them off and really make it safe. <laughs> yeah, and each time that evil emanation levels its number, so 
it does increasingly go get stronger and stronger but if you can survive the first one usually by the time it, he would do the second one he's down There's the second, uh, there, Fitz going for the skip, doesn't get it, goes with the backup of running out the door, gets to the switch, now will they make it out, it's important, that's the tricky part of that skip, is getting out, and knowing when to walk and when to run, and what way to do it, and even then, sometimes you'll get pinched in like that, you know. Fitz is hitting that switch as Mershana finishes off Lavos 2, and you know this is when the 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 uh, this is when things are starting to get worrying. <laughs> this is when the nerves start or continue and get worse. But you want to hit this menu glitch, and she did get it. She's switching the characters to put them in the right spot. So, just like uh, Aku said earlier, uh, she knows to have uh, Magus in that third spot where he'll be right over by that pit. <laughs> Oops, all robos. <laughs> <laughs> I've done at least one seed where it was all just Robo. Uh, DBZ trivia. Seed. You should have saw when uh, we were fighting a Robo too in Magus's <laughs> castle. <laughs> Marshana taking a final look at gear before this end. Deciding to put the amulet back on its rightful owner. Yeah, uh, they had a, uh, they found a swallow somewhere else for, and, and it's like, well, there's no chrono in this seat. <laughs> oh, you want to get off a little bit more healing here, because that is what's going to happen if not. This is still... This is definitely savable. One free fits heading into double golems and uh, finding the same kind of uh, problems Mershana was, but Mershana had that that interesting. Um, Strat with double shock and uh, lightning and fire, alternating between them, or uh, fire and ice, and lightning. Um, Marshana with a character down again. Really got to make sure that you get everybody back up because the trouble is, if you do just go for the center bit kill to stop the damage, that is a, a, a way you could mitigate some of that damage, but. If you kill center bit, um, if you, if you take out center bit and then you have to heal and like res and heal everybody, you lose like all the time that right bit's defense is down. It feels really bad when that happens, but unfortunately we did have a second character drop here. You're going to want to try to get up the characters with the highest speed. Yeah, the slowness of the robos is a little rough. Though there were some speed tabs in the seeds. Oh, they really need to get... 
That's unfortunate. We do have a wipe. But we're going to head back in. Probably take a look at gear and change a couple things, but... Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. I don't know what would have changed it. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so Lavo Shell, again, being one of those bosses that if you do underestimate it, be bad news bears. All of Lavos is just, I mean, Lavos is a scary set of bosses, no matter who you are. Shauna continuing against Lavos 2. As Fitz finishes the shell and uh, heads inside for that save point. And now welcoming my co-commentator for the rest of the run, uh, Smirk. How are you doing, Smirk? I'm doing outstanding. Having a blast today with tons of uh, Chrono Trigger happening. Uh, I'm loving this. Um, so catch me up a little bit, uh, what kind of, like, healing items, do you have any mega elixirs, or how many revives? 
I'm not sure how many revives each of them have, but they uh, they did have to use some in earlier fights. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure about Mega Elixirs, so we'll have to keep an eye out on that. As Marshana heads into Lavos 3 and is probably going to finish pretty close to what they did in the last race. Uh, which I think they finished like a 2.05 or so. Somewhere in that ballpark. Which is a great time. Ooh. I like what Marshana is doing here. Slowing down the battle speed. Um, I think that's a really good idea. It's something that I wouldn't remember to do if I was getting in this situation. Yeah, I'm a but big really fan. Helped. I'm a really big fan of um, adjusting the battle speed. Uh, I, I don't know, like changing it by like two, it doesn't have that big of an effect real world, but it does affect how, like if you can get your inputs in before your enemies in certain cases, it can make a, a big difference for Lavos specifically. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on a team like this where, you know, you're rocking what 10 speed robos and 15 magus like those robos are really slow and yeah lavos is not <laughs> and that's they, that's yeah. what made this end so so difficult was you know that yeah. speed it really hurts being that slow against such yeah. a vicious enemy yeah this is one of those cases where i think having like a marley here with haste would be like super amazing yeah, I don't even know that we had access to one. I think we had access to another Robo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, but I, yeah, we didn't have access to, to a whole lot. It was pretty limiting yeah. anyway. Crazy. Uh, Fitz going a little bit risky here against uh, Lavos 2 going for the arm finish and then going to try to heal up after that as Marshana continues the strats through the uh, second so, fight here. So, Cthulhu, I actually have a question. What? How does the, the strategy that Marshana is using work? Because I've always basically done left bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, 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 yeah, so center bit is... Uh, I think a safer strategy, especially for newer players, because the the whole thing is uh, the the counterattacks that you're worried about are when you if if you kill um, center bit with an AOE that also hits left bit, then it will uh. counterattack and it'll they'll do like an X strike to you, but it unlike our X strike, it's actually good. <laughs> okay. Um, and it does a lot of damage. It can do like upwards like four to six hundred damage for in certain oh, situations. So look, we're gonna see it here. They're gonna X strike oh, whoever no. input the last thing. Now they can probably save this. Um, but once that's down, in just a moment, it's gonna come up and say that um, right bit's defense is down because it's whenever left or center is killed, right's defense goes down. So right now, you don't have to worry about their most damaging attacks, and all you have to do is avoid AoEs, because if you use an AoE, it's if you hit left bit right now, they're going to X-Strike again, mm -hmm. until gotcha. Center's okay. back. But even when okay. Center bit comes back, they um, the defense isn't restored immediately. I see. So you can, once the center bit comes up, you can start hitting with AoEs and they'll damage right bit for a little while. Yes, wow, well, okay. I can see how that's safer because, I mean, that center bit, you know, if you get the unlucky teleport locations like Grandstone and the super magical attack, like, those hurt. Yeah, and all of Lavos's big scary attacks are from that center bit. So it, yeah. it's quite a bit safer in my opinion. And here you see that uh, the black hole strats on, uh, or dark hole strats on right bit, as well as uh, stereo Uzi punches with the ability to heal if needed, which is a pretty great way to go about this. It'll be interesting to see what they do now, because they can continue using single target on right bit to get that extra damage, and then they can hit with AoEs that will eventually kill center bit again. Gotcha. Yeah, until it, the defense goes back up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So this will uh, hopefully be a strong finish here, and I think it is going to be pretty close to a 205, which will be a really strong finish. But you're never out of the woods with this fight. This fight uh, will really mess you up. <laughs> yeah. I just hate that left bit so much. It just like does weird things all the time. It's like, here's some healing, here's some damage, here's... I don't know, it's evil. So uh, that's, I think that's probably why I just do left bit. Well, in but vanilla, just... it was really common in vanilla Chrono Trigger to do left bit. Because you're about 15 to 20 levels higher. And you've got right. much higher stats like across yeah, the board. Yeah, yeah. You can like one shot it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty rare in Jets that you get to one shot it. <laughs> Uzi punch on the center bit. Now the nice thing is the the perfect way to do it is for you to um, if you finish center bit with a single target, it, you won't get countered. So right, like yeah, if yeah, you yeah, keep sorry. a pretty good count of health you can like set up where you know an Uzi punch or a triple kick or something will finish it and then you can do that and there goes the defense back up on the right bit and they're both in this final stage of lava they are it's anybody's race surprisingly after after the there was a pretty oh. big disparity in the middle and oh center, gosh, bit. The center bit now that means yes. okay. they just gotta wait a second and that right bit's gonna go down and then they can uh, hopefully finish this uh, off. Yeah, that that's the grand stone of the that's the ultimate physical ability. That has wiped me so many times. Oh yeah. So. That is a painful one. But it looks like uh Oh, now it shuts off the defense, of course. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, when three fits is doing the left bit stuff, so... Yeah. And sometimes it makes sense to switch midway through. You know? Oh, okay. uh, sometimes you can go left bit to get damage off really quick with certain teams, and then you can take out center bit to get the defense down again real fast. Like you can... Mm -hmm. There are situations where it can be helpful to switch. Um, there's a strategy I've been playing with for a while. I, I think it's pretty rare that it's actually useful, but I really want it to be useful, so I keep trying it. Uh, <laughs> but there's a gambit you can do with Ayla and Luca, because um, Fire Spin? Is that what it's called? Fire Spin? Flame Whirl. Uh, fire Flame Whirl. Whirl. Yeah, Fire Whirl. It, um, it'll hit through right bits defense from oh, the start really? of the fight. So you can get oh, wow. off like, you can get off like 2,000 damage to center bit and a little over 1,000 to right bit, depending on items and stats and everything. Um, and mm -hmm. so it kind of lets you whittle down right bit, but it could also be used to execute. If, if you knew you were at like 19k damage and the defense went up yeah. and you remembered that, it could save you from do redoing a whole cycle. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's really good to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so I I normally do like what Ooh, kind of there it is? goes, two oh six fifty four. Oh, all right. GGs to Mershana. Put that in here. Really strong finish. Yes, GG's Marshana. Oh wow, super. Really close. strong finish. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I am. I need to make a confession to you, Marshana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I commentator cursed I am, you. I need oh, to no. make a confession. I definitely I'm commentator sorry. cursed you. <laughs> I commentator Not to take you. away from your fantastic run. I definitely commentator cursed <laughs> you. But I did say something about you maybe <laughs> getting your sub 2 your on this run. run. I know. I was so excited <laughs> oh, for that too. And then I had that bullshit Lavos 3 doing... Uh, uh, you know yeah, how he you does got that into that that revive loop and it's so hard to get out <laughs> and of. i couldn't get myself out i was trying so hard yeah, and i was just like oh you know that, there we go that but that's still it's i'm so still very pleased with of. this time uh, 
that early uh, go mode yeah. was exciting. <laughs> um, not oh, the no, earliest I've gone into Magus's castle. I've gone into Magus's castle at level 14, and that was scary. Kurt's in a tight spot here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. Oh, well, he's got the middle down, so maybe he can pull himself yeah, out Yeah, he's it. got time. The Here problem is he's going to lose all the time that the defense is down it's healing. True. And and by time he gets everybody up and ready to attack, center bit's going to come back right after. I, it's it's the worst feeling when it happens. <laughs> well, he's still well, being maybe... semi-aggressive there, having uh, his Magus yeah. go in after that core still. So good good balancing there. Yeah, oh, it looks sure. like his Magus is doing a bit more damage than mine does. I'm wondering I haven't if he got counted some. how much damage he's done to it, so he might be close to knocking it out. Uh, to answer your question, Marshana, he did about two dungeons more than you. Oh, okay. Did but he do uh, early woe? He did do early woe. It was the Grand Leon. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, this was a very linear seed. We don't know what was in Aristome. Um, okay. but I was telling everybody if Aristone was prism shard, all three go modes were locked behind sword. I think <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I don't, I don't remember for sure where pendant was, but, um, uh, pendant, pendant was very early. Pendant was, oh, it was uh, snail stop. purchased. Snail yeah. Stop. yeah. Um, and then we never did get to see what carpenter was, but, um, Fitz, you and Fitz were fighting, Reptite at the same time, or Retinite, not Reptite, Retinite at the same time. Mm -hmm. You won because you had Uzi Punch. Fitz mm -hmm. um, wiped. Ah. And Fitz didn't go back in. Oh, Fitz went no. to Denodoro and then went to um, Woe and then I think Hecron Cave Desert. Yeah, I. If I I pretty much treatments. always do Hecron Cave early because there's just so much tech points to get out of that one. And if you can clear those screens, like it's absolutely in my opinion worth it to do. Now you you both raced this category about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And 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 we did some races, fun races yesterday as well. Yeah. Who won the last race we, we restreamed? Uh he did, both of them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the, actually the first time I've I've beat him, fairly. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was one of those cases where I, because I got desert, I didn't have. He did the other two dungeons. I think he's a, overall a little bit better player, a little faster. Um, yeah, there were know, a couple areas where they had the skips down, or they had oh, you know yeah. a couple things in their favor. But you also you played really strong, and you made a decision quick about if you were going to take Magus Castle or not. I mean, again, I've been in Magus Castle at level 14. I know I can get through it then. It's hard. It sucks. But I can do it. So when yeah. I realized I was 17, I'm like, no, I just got to go. Lavos is going to be hard. I'm going to need to do some grinding in, um, in Ocean Palace. And maybe I should have ground out one more level that might have made uh, Lavos 3 a little smoother. But you know, I, I had very comfortable with Magus Go mode. I've gotten it a lot, so it's longer, but it feels safer to me overall. Yeah, and it didn't require that you get um, the the Wings of Time. Right. So we actually... It was a little funky going around and back and forth to unlock it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I thought it that. was really cool that we had a seed of this in a race that we never saw that ability get unlocked. Like that was really neat to me. Yeah. Uh, did the... um, did he? Did they open up a uh, future? No. No. Okay. No. I wondered if they might, but there was never a point because they would have needed, they needed clone, and and they also would have needed um. Jets Looks of like time they're in the channel to go that way. Over. Oh yeah. But um, but yeah, uh, they would have needed two key items, so I don't think it ever made sense for Fitz mm -hmm. to go to the future yeah, looking also, for one item. Also joined by Cold Drizzle here. That's uh, one free Fitz. GG's to one free Fitz. Yeah, close oh, race there. Oh yeah. 
<sighs> yeah, that was that, that desert fight was unfortunate because that core just happened to go down the way it did. And then yeah. you know, oh, yeah, I got, I got a little fast with my inputs and I probably should have taken the time just to learn Uzi punch before I went down there and it would have been would have been fine, but I thought I could get through anyway and then whoops. So <laughs> And the and oops all robo those... seed. <laughs> <laughs> so many robos. I even checked the uh, uh, the frog burrow on my way over. I was like, who's here? You know, maybe I'll find a Luca or something. That'd be cool. Um, no such luck, but. <laughs> it was a robo frog <laughs> or a robo magus. Yep. yep. Yeah. It... Oops, all robos. I, I got to give uh, props to, uh, to Fitz here. Um. You entered, what was it? You entered Magus Castle. I, I think you were an entire Magus Castle behind. I'm pretty sure. I think you were entering Magus Castle and uh, Mershana had beaten Magus and was heading up to Zeal. And you uh, made up a lot nice of job. distance there. Um, and then one one unfortunate wipe on Mershana's side on the final boss um, put you within, like, you were both in Lavos 3 at the same time. Wow. So, nice. very close race, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see, now that, as far as the, as far as the official restreams we've done, you're one and one. <laughs> <laughs> with the, We'll oh, see yeah. who wins the yeah. best of three Friday night, and we'll post more info about when that race is. Um, as we know, or when we find out exactly when it's going to be, but, um, I think it is Friday night at, uh, pretty late in the evening, but not like stupid late. So it should be a good time. And that'll be on Strizer 86's channel. Um, and that is for an event that Jets has been a part of for the last couple years, um, called Game Over Cancer. And it is, it's been a lot of fun. Well, great, great game. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this seed. And thank you to uh, Smirk for hopping in last minute here and f helping me finish off with comms for the Lavos fights. Yeah, it was a uh, very entertaining last few minutes to, to be a part of. So, oh, yeah. did my, I think my headphones just died. Oh, I... <laughs> we can. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and end the stream there, but thanks everybody for coming out and hanging out, and uh, we will hopefully see you Friday, and then we'll have some tournament stuff uh, coming out. Keep an eye on the Discord for that. There will be more stuff coming out about the um, the tournaments and when those races are going to be and everything. So just keep an eye out on the Discord, and we will see you guys all later.